How are you guys? It's another day. It's another good time we have together. And uh, for today, I have a very good topic for you. Uh, for the CPA 3 and 4, and that is in section number 4. And today, I want us to tackle something to do with uh, audit and assurance. Some few topics or some topics. So, take your paper or a book and a pen. We shall take some few notes up to where our time will reach us. So, Let's proceed. I don't know how you have your paper and a pen. This is a very, very crucial paper. Audit and assurance. Also, it just needs you to read and understand the notes. Read and read and read again. Repeat. Once more, have them in your mind. Have them in your fingerprints and whichever question comes it will just rotate within the notes that you have so let's proceed and uh, we shall start with topic one topic one that is definition of terms yes some topic definition of terms and we shall start by defining the term audit. What's an audit? And an audit is the independent examination and expression of an opinion in the financial statements of an economic entity by appointed qualified auditor. What's an audit? Is the independent examination and expression of an opinion on the financial statements of an economic entity by appointed qualified auditor. There is another term here, financial statements, as you just had it in our definition of the term audit. What's financial statements? These are the balance sheets and the profits and loss accounts prepared by an entity. These are the balance sheets at the profit and loss accounts or books of accounts prepared by an entity. And uh, this preparation is governed by standards which one is international financial reporting standards IFRS and International Auditing Standards, that is IAS. What are the rules of these standards? So, subtopic, rules of International Financial Reporting Standards and International Accounting or Auditing Standards in preparation of financial statements number one no 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 sorry advantages of advantages of this international financial reporting standards we have advantage number one disputes resolution it helps in disputes resolution number two it protects the interests of shareholders. It protects the interests of shareholders. Number three, it helps prevention and detection of frauds and errors. It helps prevention and detection of frauds and errors. Number four, improves business efficiency. It improves business efficiency. Disadvantages. It's costly. It's costly 
to time ray so it consumes a lot of time to conduct all the thing you need preparation examination and also giving the reports so it consumes a lot of time number three company company secrets may be linked company secrets may be linked so information of the company can fall uh, to bad hearts, thus making the company to be in the red. All right? So let's proceed. What's a financial accounting? What's a financial accounting? What's a financial accounting? It entails provision of information about a business or company in form of financial statements which are then made public. Financial accounting. It entails provision of information about a business or company in form of financial statements which are then made public. What's an auditing? Not audit now. Definition of auditing. It's a check carried out by an independent auditor to make sure that what a company says about its financial statements is true. It's a check carried out by an independent auditor to make sure that what a company says about its financial statements is true. Then, another subtopic, differences between financial accounting and auditing. Financial accounting and auditing. Uh, in our first quorum, we shall have two quorums. We shall have financial accounting, and on the other right-hand side of mine, we shall have auditing. So, separate the two. Then, in our quorum of financial accounting, number one, it is not an independent examination. Financial accounting is not an independent examination. But in auditing, it is an independent examination. Number two, in financial accounting, it is a continuous process. But in auditing, it's conducted once in a financial year usually at the end of the year financial year of that company neither so number three financial accounting are governed by general accounting principles but auditing it's governed by international accounting standards all right those are some of the differences between the auditing financial accounting we have just one similarity here I have that I came across so similarities both are statutory requirements both are statutory requirements so my assignment find other similarities between financial accounting and auditing so let's proceed another subtopic users of audited financial statements users of audited financial statements and number one present and potential investors those are those people who are willing to invest in a particular company they can rely with the audited books of accounts to see whether the company is a going concern if a company is almost to close or is still going on with its business number two employers yes if a company is making a lot of losses in a yuba yuba will you still be comfortable working there so number three readers 
viongozi number 4 suppliers and other trade creditors wewe utawauzia kampuni yenye inakaa kufunga so they rely on those audited reports customers government public lawyers competitors stock brokers trade unions etc etc those are some of the users of audited financial statements we proceed with another subtopic types of audits types of audits uh, it can be classified into several types and we shall start by number a or number one or roman one which is classified according to the nature of work done classified according to the nature of work done and under that we have one statutory audit statutory audit these are carried out as per the requirements of various statutes these are carried out as per the requirement of various statutes and eg Companies Act Cap 486, which requires that all public companies to have their financial statements subject to an independent audit. E.g. Companies Act Cap 486, which requires that all public companies to have their financial statements subjected to an independent audit. Number two, private audit. These are not governed by statutes. They are performed by independent auditors because the owners, members, or interested parties require them carried out. All right? Private audits are carried out for organizations such as non-governmental organizations, partnerships, and clubs, among others. Number two of classification is according to approach, approach of the work to be done. It's classified according to approach of the work to be done. And in under that, we have continuous audit. Continuous audit. This is an approach whereby an auditor an audit is carried out throughout the financial period. This is a, an approach where an audit is, out, is carried out throughout the financial period. Two, or B or Roman two, interim audit. This is an audit carried out halfway through the financial period. It is prepared for the final audit, used for the final for the final audit. Number three, final audit. These are usually done at the end of the year as either a continuation of the interim audit for large and medium-sized companies or as a single audit for small companies at end of financial period. I repeat. Final audits, these are usually done at the end of the year as either a continuation of the interim audit or large and medium sized companies or as a single audit for small companies at the end of financial period. From there, we are still writing other types of audits. We have but no, Roman 2 or uh, Roman 3 or C, sorry, other types of audits. We have procedural audits. Number one, procedural audits. This requires examination of procedures or records for reliability and accuracy. This requires examination of procedures or records for reliability and accuracy. Two, 
management audits. These involve investigation of the company's entire management to ascertain whether the directors are running the company in the most optimal way for the benefit of the shareholders. This involves in the investigation of the company's entire management to ascertain whether the directors are running the company in the most optimal way for the benefit of the shareholders. And number three, balance sheet audit. This tests the strength of internal control system by working backwards to get the initial transactions using assertion methodology. This tests the strength of internal control system by working backwards to get the initial transactions using assertion methodology. Then, in that balance sheet audit, we have had an in, a term, internal control system. And uh, this internal control system, there is a audit called internal audit. It's conducted by internal auditor. And uh, what is an internal audit? What is the definition of the term internal audit? It's an independent activity to examine and evaluate the organization's risk management process and the system of control and to make recommendations for the achievement of the company's objectives. It's an independent activity to examine and evaluate the organization's risk management process and systems of control and to make recommendations for the achievements of the company's objectives. The duties of internal audit personnel are one, reviewing the economic efficiency and effectiveness of the company's operation. Two, reviewing the company's compliance with external rules and regulations and internal policies and procedures. Three, reviewing and advising the management on development of key organization systems and implementation of major changes. Those are some of the duties of internal audit personnel. And let's proceed. Comparison between internal audit and external auditing. Comparison between internal auditing and external auditing. We have three columns. One, we have column of aspects. Two, you have column of internal auditing, and really, you have column of external auditing. And in our column of aspect, we shall start with aspect number one, which is objectives. In internal auditing, the objective is to advise management on whether organization has sound internal control systems to protect it against losses. But in external auditing, its objective is to provide an opinion as to whether or not the financial statements show a true and fair view of the company's state of affairs. Number two, in aspect, legal basis. In internal audit, it is not a legal requirement but corporate governance advices and recommends that a company should have an internal audit department. But in external audit, it is a legal requirement for a limited liability company and public bodies to have their accounts audited. In aspect number three, SCOOF, it covers all, sorry, in internal auditing, it covers all areas of, organ, of organizations. But in external auditing, it has a purely financial focus. Aspect number four, approach. 
it is increasingly risk based that is in in internal auditing it is increasingly risk based but in external auditing it is increasingly risk based as it only tests underlying transactions that form having of financial statements Res number five aspect responsibility in internal auditing the responsibility is to advise and make recommendations on internal control and the corporate governance the responsibility is to advise and make recommendations on internal control and the corporate governance but in external auditing the responsibility is to form an opinion on whether financial statements shows a true and fair view all right so from there scope and objectives of internal audit function scope and objectives of internal audit functions let's proceed writing this depends on the size and structure of the entity and the responsibility assigned to it by management ordinarily this would include one review of accounting internal control system so we are writing number one scoop number one of the scoop and objective of, of internal audit function is review of accounting internal control system b carrying out examination of financial and operational information c review of the economic efficiency and effectiveness of operations including non financial controls of the of the entity number four review of the company's compliance with external rules and regulations number five review of entities compliance with management policies and other internal requirements and number six carry out independent investigations into company affairs as required by management so those are some of the scope and objectives of internal audit functions let's proceed similarities between internal audit and external audit one similarity both auditors are concerned about the strength and property functioning no sorry proper functioning of the in, of the internal control system two both auditors have an have as part of their duty to ensure that the company adheres to all relevant rules and regulations number three both auditors interested in ensuring that the company keeps proper books of records number four both auditors are concerned about preventing a detection detection of all errors and frauds number five both auditors have interest on safeguarding companies assets then external audit sorry external auditors reliance on work of internal auditor what are some of the some of the factors that external auditor consider before relying on the, the work of the internal auditor and we have number one organization status organization status how is the organization status number two scope of work scope of work number three technical competence technical competence of the internal auditor number four due profession due professional care due professional care of the internal auditor and number five availability of resources are resources available then advantages of internal audit function advantages of internal audit function number one it reinforces application of internal controls it reinforces application of internal controls two it prevents and detects errors and frauds 
Number three, assist management in implementation of company's policy. Number four, assist external auditor in highlighting areas of weaknesses in internal control system. Number five, assist the company in achieving its objectives by ensuring that all redundancies, procedures, and policies are followed. Number six, the internal audit function guards company's resources, thus leading to not being misused. So, another subtopic, limitations of an, an internal audit. Limitations of an internal audit. One, costly. Two, timely. Three, may lack necessity. Necessary support from top management. May deny the internal audit function its due dependence. Those are some of the limitations. Factors necessitating growth in internal audit. Panini internal audit in the area to grow. What one I touch internal audit? One, increase in business size. Dynamic technology. Three, registration and regulatory requirements. Four, competition. Competition. Let's proceed. And, uh, I think uh, up to that juncture, those are some of the common topics or subtopics you won't miss in a question paper. So let's leave it at that point. Until next time, study those notes, read, 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 read again until you understand, until it sticks inside your head. So if any question comes from the topics and subtopics we have covered, please don't let me down. Thank you very much and have a nice time. Thank you.